Texans at Eagles. Marco, we're going to do this a little differently. Usually I ask you who you like. I'm taking the projection here and giving the pick on this game. But my, I'm going to ask you a question before I dig too deep into my thoughts. How good is Michael Vick? Well, right now, Michael Vick's playing on a level that nobody else has seen. His passing has improved dramatically. No, no one else has seen from Michael Vick? From Michael Vick. So really, though, that I could quarterback and, 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 and play my best game, and that team's in trouble. So my question is, with 32 quarterbacks starting in this league, how many are better than Vic? You don't have to name them, but, but how many do you think you'd start a team with before Vic? Three or four tops. I put Vic right now in the Three top Three or, top. oh, Lord, now we got to dig in. Right. Breeze, Manning, Brady, Rivers. So which of those don't make it? Okay, and then I'll put, I'll put Big Ben in the top five with it. So we, we got Vic is in the top six. Uh, so right now with Big Ben being five, then there's no one out. Not Eli Manning. No. I mean, let's go through the other, you know, like good quarterbacks. Not Eli. Who else we got? Is there anyone else even in the conversation? All right. So you think Vic is an elite quarterback? What I, let me preface that by saying that of all the quarterbacks that we mentioned on that list, he is unique in his style to all of those. Okay. And the reason being is because he is such a danger with his feet. That is what's got so many defensive coordinators up, you know, burning the midnight oil, trying to devise game plans to keep him under wraps. And what I, when I said about him being improved, he's always had the ability to run, but his passing has gotten no, better. I think, I, well, clearly. So, so the, the, Tony Romo jumps out at me. You like no, Vic like over to, Romo. I don't like Romo at all. All right. So now the question is how good is Philly? Because even three weeks ago, you know, you always talk about things that people see on TV especially. Mm -hmm. And they had that Monday night game, Philly, and literally the next week, Vegas in their rankings had Philly as the best team in the league. Now, that's dropped off. They actually have San Diego right now as the best team in the league, which kind of flabbergasts me. But the, the question is, is how good is this Philly team? So in your power rankings, where do you put Philly in your top ten? I had put Philly right now in the top, probably sixth or seventh in the league. I still don't think they're as good as people put them after that Monday night game, but I think they're more of what we saw last week in Chicago. Now, where do you fall on Houston? Is There's two ways to look at Houston. One is the way I tend to, which is this is a team that's got a lot. It's like an all-star team on offense, got a lot of talent. But they, they in, almost inevitably lose close games. They see anytime character or, you know, the, again, we're going to be talking about the Steelers coming up. The games the Steelers win 8 out of 10 are the games that Houston loses 8 out of 10. What's your opinion in general on this team? Well, this team's, you know, their MO is very simple. They're a great offensive team. They're a horrible defensive team. Prior to last week, which they faced a third-string quarterback when they faced Tennessee because of injuries, the previous six games, they have given up 29 or more points six consecutive games. You can't win in the NFL with a defense like that. But even though they've had a somewhat disappointing season, would you agree with me that their motivation on this game is at max? Is They're in the, the divisional, you know, to win their division. They're in that race. I, if anything, they've given away a few games, but they're still in it. Would you agree that there's no motivation questions with oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Both teams are full motivation this week. If I said, what do you, how good do you think Texas is as a road dog? Would you just got feeling good or bad or average? You mean the Texans? The Texans, the Texans. yeah, okay. the Texans. As a road dog, because of their offense, I think they're a more attractive play as the road dog because you are getting the points with them, whereas when you have them as a home favorite and because of that defense, it puts you in positions where they, they win and don't cover so too because often. So of because of the back door potential? Yes. All right, because that's what I, I would have came into that question guessing not so good because typically road dogs is another character situation, is are you going to be able to go in a hostile environment? Offense has more trouble traveling than defense typically. 
passing has more tr trouble traveling than running. So really, uh, typically a passing team is the worst traveling team. The turf might be a little different, so the timing patterns, the crowd noise. They've actually, now this is a short sample, but they've actually covered eight of 11 as a road dog. My thought was potentially that back door. Is that where you come down? Right. They're never, because of their offense, they're never out of a game. And a lot of times when teams do get big leads, they go into that prevent. One thing that I will give you when you gave all of the negatives to Houston, why you would have thought it wouldn't have been on the road. One thing you will have to start consider with this team as we go into the month of December, this is a dome team that their offense can start to not carry them as much Especially when they in, play in, in a night game too. A night game in Colder. December in Philadelphia, yes. That's Elements. interesting. That's a good point. That's I, why I, you keep me around, sir. That's it. That and that jack. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you this. Thursday night is special, especially for the road team. And last week you heard all the talk, last couple weeks, well, you get done Sunday, you can't even go on the field, you just do walkthroughs, you have a half a day to game plan. So I think that you got to up home field just a little bit. Um, is there anything about this game in general that makes you think that, that the home field or the short week is less or more important than typically? We know it's important. Well, I think clearly what we started this whole video with, Michael Vick, because you've got another factor of preparation. Not only do you have to prepare for you know, a passing game, a running game, you got to worry about that third option, the quarterback, becoming a weapon with his feet. So you're saying Vick is uncommon, even unique in his skill set, and preparation's key, and this is, of all NFL games played, a road team on Thursday has the least preparation. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to do something unprecedented here. I am going to, I had a projection, mm -hmm. don't put it up, Dustin, producer Dustin, is I was going to go with a slight lean towards Houston. I thought the line should be about seven, it's nine. I'm actually going to say pass. Because you brought up two key points. The Vic preparation needs that aren't going to be met because of the short week. And then the nighttime weather. I, I think that Philly's a little bit of a premium on them. But I, I think that maybe it's warranted in this case. So I'm actually going to pass this game. Yeah, I have no official prediction myself on this game at this time. But we do have a special offer this week for all of our viewers and anybody at pregame. Why does your voice change? When you go to the special offer, it's like, yeah, so, but now let me tell you. About, I, it's probably like when that you the, get really excited. That's the TV announcer voice, you uh -huh. know, when you're watching those infomercials late uh -huh. at night, you know. But uh, I was going to insert a joke there for you, but I'll leave that go. <laughs> but the situation is, we every Thursday we have one capper that we feature for a dollar, and you can pick up his best bet that day. Well, we're going to have a special treat this week. I'm going to give my pick away for a dollar, but it's not going to be just any pick. Thursday night is one of the best nights uh, of the week this week for TV games. There's a couple really good NBA games, one in particular, Miami and Cleveland, the return of LeBron. And if I hear that ad campaign one more time, LeBron's coming back to Cleveland and he's bringing the heat. <laughs> the ad I should tell you, we don't edit these. Okay. So typically I'd cut out the last 45 That's seconds. Well. So let's get to it. <laughs> You're getting but, too comfortable. Well, you know, <laughs> TV game of the week I'm going to give away for a dollar this week. It'll be the best TV game I feel this week, and it'll be one of those. All right, so you go to pregamepros.com. Every Thursday we give one best bet away for free. This week you're going to be the best bet, and you're giving your TV game of the week away. TV game of the week for a dollar. That's a good deal. All right, you guys should know this is the first time all year we haven't had even an opinion on a game. But, again, I just think that the Marco talked me off of those two points. And, really, I think there's a lesson to this is I handicap coming into this show by myself, Marco by himself, and then we collaborate for the first time live on air is I have to be open to what Marco's teaching me, and he has to be open on the occasion I might have something that teaches him <laughs> something with his vast experience. But that really is you as a handicapper should be thinking the same way, which is you should be thinking, okay, I've got my opinion on this game. Now, what good points are Marco making and bad points that I don't agree with, vice versa with me? 
And the fact of the matter is then you are smarter after the video, hopefully, than before. And maybe you're going to change your opinion just a little bit. Marco, you changed mine. We're passing this game. Next up, though, now, oh, you can continue this conversation in the comments section with Marco and me. But next up, we're going to be breaking down Illinois at Fresno State on Friday night.